It was once thought that the proliferation of time-saving devices and automation technologies would generate an overabundance of free time. In the not too distant future, we'd all be living a life of ease. That's not quite the way it turned out. Time-saving technologies raised expectations and collapsed production cycles. The more advanced technology got, the more the pace of work accelerated. It's what science writer Matt Ridley describes as the Red Queen effect. If a competitor makes an improvement, you must make an equal or greater improvement just to stay neck and neck with them. Ridley was writing about evolutionary biology, but the same applies to business and industry. Every technological advancement establishes a new normal. Competitors must match the new advances or perish. This scenario has played out over and over in every area of human endeavor as successive waves of digital transformation push us closer and closer to working and living at the speed of electrons. This is an environment our neurobiology has not evolved to handle. We evolved in an analog world that moves at a fraction of the speed of our accelerating digital universe. The world we spent millennia adapting to has changed radically, practically overnight. Large-scale, abrupt changes in the environment cause mass extinctions in nature, as species cannot adapt to sudden large-scale changes. We are seeing plenty of evidence of human stress, anxiety, and destruction, creative and otherwise, due to the accelerating pace of change. Ray Kurzweil, a well-known futurist and director of engineering at Google, predicts that the 21st century will see the equivalent of 20,000 years of progress, at today's rate of change. So how will humanity cope with a pace of change totally beyond its capacity to process? By augmenting human biology with machine capabilities. Biotech startup Synchron has received FDA approval to begin human testing of its implantable brain-computer interface. Elon Musk startup Neuralink is planning on beginning clinical trials and planting a chip in a human brain in 2022. The initial application for these implants is for people with spinal cord injuries, but as the technology advances, the range of applications will expand exponentially. We are beginning to see the legal implications of the digital augmentation of humans. In Riley v. California in 2014, the Supreme Court applied the Fourth Amendment to the data on a person's cell phone. The court found that the phone, although not embedded in the body, has become an appendage of the person. Even if today we don't have chips implanted in our brains, our transition to our cyborg future is well underway. We are connected 24-7 by our smartphones, fitness devices, and smart speakers. Even our social interactions are now mediated and monitored by machines through our all-pervasive social media. Business decisions are now commonly augmented by machine intelligence through the use of machine learning and deep learning algorithms. They can process data and produce actionable intelligence at rates that dwarf human abilities to process information. As the Borg from Star Trek said, resistance is futile, you will be assimilated. Assimilation is a lot easier than one might think. Although many died for our freedoms, it turns out we've been willing to give them all up for free shipping and more likes on social media. The path of least resistance is hard to resist. And digital services are always ready to deliver more convenience, speed, and ease of use. It's how Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos conquered more of the world's population than Chinggis Khan or Alexander the Great without firing a shot. What about the moral and ethical implications of human augmentation? That will likely get sorted out after the fact. No government, business, or individual will want to be at a disadvantage to potential competitors. The human augmentation arms race has already begun, and it's highly unlikely that regulation will be able to keep up. At the pace that technology is evolving, machine and genetic augmentation will become a necessity to be able to function successfully in the society we are creating. According to Yuval Noah Harari, author of the best-selling book Sapiens, within a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities that are more different from us and we are different from chimpanzees. We may soon be looking at the last generations of Homo sapiens as Earth's dominant species.